All right, I've got a little circuit drawn here already. Um, I want to talk a little bit about connecting batteries in parallel here. Before we get to that, though, we're going to, um, before we start adding batteries, more than one battery anyways, let's look at a simple circuit. We've got a 12 volt DC battery here connected to a 1K ohm resistor. And um, let's make believe, okay, we're using some sort of a, we're connecting to a power inverter. Maybe you're out living off the grid somewhere. You've got a solar uh, panel array that you're using to charge up some 12 volt uh, DC car batteries, okay? Um, those, those car batteries charge up with the sun. They're DC, it's a DC charge on those things and maybe you wanna run a refrigerator or something, some, some sort of an AC device, something that runs an alternating current um, off of these batteries. You gotta run it through an inverter. And that's, let's say what, that's what this R1 is. This R1 represents an inverter. It's an inverter load. Okay. So we've got um, 12 volts DC V1 R1. Let's do a quick analysis on this circuit right here. Okay, so we're gonna go, let's go up here. We'll do a new simulation profile. We'll call it um, P, I'm just gonna call it VV, PV1. We'll create it. We'll stick with the default supply. Okay, run. Look at the log file down here. Looks like everything run, has run okay. I'll pop open my little oscilloscope window here. Looks good. Back here, I can click the V's, the I, V, I, and W and look at voltage. Okay, there's, there's our, oops, let's just look at voltage first. Um, oh, we got them all, didn't we? Okay, so we're seeing, let's do it again. 12 volts here on the positive side of the battery, zero volts here. This node, all of this node is attached to ground. And um, so yeah, the voltage looks good. Current, okay, we got 12 volts dropped across a 1K ohm resistor. So yeah, we're getting 12 milliamps, Ohm's law, checks. Current, or I'm sorry, power, we're seeing 144 milliwatts. Um, I squared times R, 12 squared is what, 144 times a, um, uh, that's 20 milliamps. Again, it's 12 milliamps, 12 milliamps squared times 1K ohm, you get 144 milliwatts. Notice also a little, uh, we just look at current, notice the current uh, value is displayed above R1. That means current is entering R1 at the top and flowing in the downward direction through R1. So it's flowing clockwise in this circuit. We get down to here, 12 milliamps through the, uh, through the, uh, through the battery, okay, flowing in the upward direction. So current again, flowing here in a clockwise direction. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add another 12 volt battery. Let's see what happens. Notice these, we're just showing voltage here. This, this power supply is just listed as a voltage. We're seeing 12 milliamps flowing through the thing, which means as far as we're concerned initially anyways, there's no resistance to this battery. This is an ideal battery. Let's, slab, let's put another one of these in. Let's put it here. Let's turn off our current here. Let's make it 12 also. So it's like we're sticking another 12 volt DC battery in our, our battery uh, array here. Let's wire it in. And let's go here. There we go. Let's make a new profile. We'll call this PV2 for two voltage sources. I'm gonna say create, apply, okay, run it, or oops, we just made a profile, didn't we? Let's run it, let's cancel that. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay, I'm not seeing any errors down in here. Log file, hmm, looks like it's probably okay, um, but maybe it isn't. What's this thing say right here? Oh, we are getting an error. Okay, 
What are we seeing? It says voltage source and or inductor loop involving V1, V, V2. You may break the loop by adding a series resistance. So what this is saying in a piece by kind of a way is you've got a short circuit here. You've got V2 shorted out and it's being shorted out by the B, V1 battery. We don't have any resistance associated with it. So every battery, every voltage source is gonna have some internal resistance. If you do a little searching around on the web, you'll see a healthy 12 volt car battery is going to have about 0 0.02 ohms of resistance in series. Okay, so let's go back. I'm going to remove this piece of wire here. I'm going to go grab a oops, go grab a resistor. I'm going to stick it here. I'll flip it around in a minute. Okay, R to make it vertical. I'm gonna plop it, it's a technical term, plop. I'm gonna plop it right here. And we're gonna give it a value. Well, let's change the name of it. We'll call it V1. V1R. So that's the internal resistance of V1 the V1 battery. And we're gonna give it a value 0 0.02. Okay, I'm gonna wire that thing in there now. Wire it here, wire it here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Okay, V2, V2 is another car battery. Let's take an internal resistance here. Same thing, if it's a healthy battery. Let's put it in series with V2. We'll call this, uh, what, V2, what did I call the other one? Yeah, v, we'll call this V2R for resistance of the second battery. And we'll give this one a resistance of uh, 0 0.02 ohms. Okay. Now uh, let's wire it in. And let's try running this and see what happens. Okay, so we're going to go with a new schematic. And we're going to call it, uh, what do we call it? PV2? PV2. Two, we'll call this one for two batteries. Oh, I guess I've used that name before. Let's call it PV uh, TWO. That's just a name conflict, it has nothing to do with P Spice. I had already used that name, uh, evidently, on another circuit. Okay, so let's say OK. Uh, let's try running it. See what happens. How are we looking? It looks like uh, I don't see any errors here. What do we got here? Oh, we're seeing our little oscilloscope screen here. That's probably a good sign. All right, let's go back. And let's see if we can see our voltages. Mm -hmm. 12, 12, 12, 0. OK, how about currents? Okay, what are we seeing? We're seeing six, six, 12, okay. What's going on here? Okay, we can only have a total of 12 milliamps flowing through R1, because we only got 12 volts across R1. You see what's happening? We're dropping the current draw on these batteries, which means the batteries are gonna last longer, okay? Um, so we're, what we're doing is we're multiplying capacity. Instead of pulling 12 milliamps off of a single battery, we're now pulling six milliamps off of two batteries. How about current, or how about uh, power? Still 144 milliwatts, okay? That hasn't changed, all right? So the, really what we wanna look at is we wanna look at current here. Six milliamps. Hmm. 
What if I had a third battery? Let's throw a third one on here. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put the resistor in first just because I'm set up for it. Let's put our resistor here. Let's rotate it in place. Slide it over a little bit. I messed that up, didn't I? Yeah. There we go. Let's go here. So we'll call this, uh, I'm going to call this VR3. Okay. Give it a value again of 0 0.02. So we don't end up with a with a dead short in our simulation here. And let's grab another. I put I could copy and paste these. VDC. I'm entering them individually. Okay, we're gonna go here. So this one's V3. We'll wire our stuff together. Here we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, we got to make this 12 volts. So it's 12 volts DC. And what do you think is going to happen here? What are we? What are going to? What are we going to be getting? Uh, I should have called this V3R just to be consistent the way I named the other two. So we've got three car batteries now in parallel. Okay. We know we got to supply what 12 milliamps to our one. Now we got 12 divided by three. Hmm. Each of these should just be drawing four milliamps now. Let's give that a run. See what happens here. So we'll call this, uh, we'll call this new simulation. Um, P V I'll call it PV3 for three batteries. Okay. We'll stick with our defaults, say okay. We'll run P spice. No errors here. Let's click this window. That looks good. No errors there. Let's hit V's. 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts. We're still dropping 12 volts. We got 12 volts on this whole node here. Dropping 12 volts across R1. Current. If our theory is correct, we should be getting what? Um, we, we're going to get 12 milliamps, 12 volts divided by 1k ohm. So we know we're going to have 12 milliamps flowing through R1. This time we got three batteries. So 12 divided by three is what? Four. So we should have four milliamp draw on each of these batteries. Let's try it. Yeah, there we go. See, four milliamps on each of the batteries. Let's turn the V off and not display that. That's pretty cool. So the more batteries we add in parallel, okay, the less individual draw we're gonna get off each battery. Let's look at power again. We're still supplying 144 milliwatts to our uh, to our load here, to our one. All right, so this is really pretty important stuff when it comes to things like, um, as I said, solar arrays. Um, again, boats, um, you, you charge up, you can you can connect up shore power or on an RV, connect up, uh, connect up to an external power supply, an AC power supply, and charge off of that, charge your batteries off of that. You can have a solar array on the roof, um, there's different, again, different ways you can charge. You can have a diesel generator um, is another way you'll charge up batteries. But you charge up a bank of batteries, the more batteries you have in parallel, the less individual draw you're going to see on each of those batteries. So I'm going to stop this here.